Hi there, and welcome to WB Fun Woodworking. I'm Don. Some of you may have seen the video that I did that's quite popular on using a white pencil to mark dark woods. Well, in that video, I used this white pencil. It's one that you sharpen like on a pencil sharpener, and it's called Quilter's Choice. And it was used by quilters to mark fabric that they needed to cut out for the different shapes to put in a quilt. It worked out really nice, but it has, as you can see, it's gotten fairly short, and it has to be constantly sharpened to get a nice point. Since then, I've come up with two much better choices. The first example I'll share with you is this pica, or pica as some people call it. This is a pencil that fits in a sleeve that's in my apron, a little difficult to get out, which is good. But this sleeve also has a pencil sharpener on it, and I'll show you how that works later on close up. But that's the first choice that I had for a white pencil that's really kind of nice. The second choice is really a mechanical pencil, but it has white lead. And again, this is one that's used by quilters. It's called a sew line pencil, and I'll give you more information on that as we go along. Back when I made these dead blue mallets and the hangers that go on the wall, I used a white pencil to mark this dark myrtle wood. In case you're wondering why I made two dead blue mallets, well, the one on the left is much nicer than the one on the right, and it hangs as an example of my woodworking in my office. The one on the right is the one I use out in the shop, and it's hanging on my French cleats on my windows. As shown here, these white lines really show up on this dark myrtle wood, so it made it much easier when I cut these segments out on the table saw. I have here a full set of the King's Fine Woodworking mallets that James King and his family make in Colorado. They're wonderful mallets, and I have them hung here on my French cleats that I have in my window. I bought the little one, and I really love it. It's very nice to have a little one. And the middle one, I actually won in a contest that James had, and I'm grateful for that. And I was so surprised in the package, they also included their larger mallet. So great thanks to the family, the James King family for that. But what I was going to tell you is that when I made this wall hanger, I also made one for James and his family, and I used my white pencil to mark the walnut hanger parts on this plaque. Whether I was cutting straight lines on the table saw or curved lines on the bandsaw, these white lines made it much easier to see what I was cutting. And I was very happy that I found this white pencil that I could use for this. On this shot at the bandsaw, you can really see how those white lines stand out on this darker wood. The white lines were also very helpful at the spindle sander. While the white lines were rather wide, I designed this so that I would take most, if not all, of the white line to get the shape that I wanted. Here's the resulting mallet racks. The one on the left, of course, is mine and my shop. And on the right is the one that the King's Fine Woodworking family has in their shop. My most recent use of a white pencil on dark wood is when I installed these Jessam clear-cut stock guides to my table saw fence. You may have seen those in the video. In the following segments of attaching my Jessam rails to my table saw fence, I used the white markers. I used both of them. I used the pica and the mechanical pencil that I got that's used for quilting. There were some times when I wanted a thinner line, so I used the quilting mechanical pencil. As shown here, the pica is really good, and it's designed for getting down into deep holes and making a mark. I'm using the pica here for the same reason on a chisel rack that I'm making for my French cleat wall. 
you can see how the pica is able to get down into the hole and make a mark. Now after I remove these clamps, you'll be able to see the mark that I made with the pica down inside of those holes. While this cherry that I'm marking on is not as dark as the myrtle wood or the walnut, I still liked using the white pencils. When I marked where the chisel ends will rest on this chisel rack, I decided I wanted a little finer line, so I used the mechanical pencil. And as shown here, it can get into tight places that the pica can't get into. Those lines help me mark this X where I'm going to drill a hole for a rare earth magnet to hold the end of the chisel. The first pencil I'll show close up is the pica, or some people call it pica, P-I-C-A. This green part is what stays in my apron. It's a sleeve that holds the pica pencil. But it's really nice to have because the pica pencil fits in there very tightly. It doesn't fall out when I bend over. But the sleeve also has the pencil sharpener in it. And if I can sharpen the pencil here by pushing the lead in and turning it. There we go. And I can get a very fine point on that pencil, which is really nice. I've painted the tip of this, it used to be green, I painted it white to let me know that that's the one that has the white lead in it. These pencils are called deep hole pencils. And they're used a lot by carpenters, from what I understand. And what they're designed for is you can get down into a hole like I have here in this knob. And I can scribe inside that circle and get the outline of that circle inside the knob. What I'm finding inside the shop is when I was using these Quilter's Choice pencils, I was constantly having to sharpen them and get a fine point and even then they would break off fairly easily. I'm finding that this pica is much sturdier as far as the point is concerned and it's much easier to sharpen. I'm not using nearly as much of the pencil and the lead to do that. One person asked on the first video how easy it is to erase these white pencils. Well, I'll put a mark here on the wood. Take some 320 sandpaper. Gone. Just before I did the final save on this video and was ready to upload it to YouTube, I discovered that Pica does sell a refill of white lead for their pencils. Previously, I could only find the white lead as part of a multi-pack of different colors. I'll leave a link to these in the description below. As I'm sure all of you know, in woodworking, there are times when you want to draw a finer line than what the pica will do. In most of my woodworking, I use these Bic mechanical pencils. They're pretty cheap. I buy them in a big multi-pack. I have them literally all over the shop, and that's what I use most of the time. But when I'm marking dark woods like walnut here, I found that the Soline pencil is really excellent. It's a way to go when trying to do a fine line. Now, this is a 0.9 millimeter lead, so it's not quite as thin as the Bix, but it's pretty good. I put a darker piece of walnut up on my bench so that we can see the difference between the white line and the black line on a dark piece of wood. So I'm going to use the sew line and mark a white line. Now that's a pretty thin line, that's pretty good. Let's try the same thing with the dark line. Definitely the white line stands out much better than the black line on this piece of dark wood. So you can see the advantage of using a white pencil to mark your dark wood. For the sew line white pencil, I can get the leads in packages of six. So that's pretty convenient. I don't think I'm gonna use those six leads up for quite a while. These are much more sturdy 
than that original pencil that I used. One of the things I found with these new pencils, as opposed to this quilter's pencil that I had that you have to sharpen with a pencil sharpener is that I would lose these. I'd put them down someplace and not know where they are, whereas the pica fits really nicely in my apron and I know where it is. And I have the mechanical pencil right next to it in my apron. So I know exactly where they are. I don't really even have to look to find them. So if you like this video, remember to give it that thumbs up. Ask any questions or make comments down below. I love reading your comments and answering questions. Share the video with others. This is one that got shared a lot when I made the first time around. And I'm sure that some people will be happy to see this one as well. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe today and remember to ring that notification bell so that you know when I put out some videos. And thank you all very much for watching.